Start with the pledge of start with the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America, America to, the to the republic which stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, liberty, the visible liberty and justice for all. Okay, and uh, Mr. McGuire has just joined us, Adrian. Oh, okay. Adrian, thank you for that. Sorry, everybody. I was a Ram Fall sports meeting. Now I'm home. Uh, so we did item one. Let's move on to item two, public speak. Let's, uh, in the community center, who is uh, in the community center? You got to unmute. Uh, Jeff Ballard, Grace Gastonian, and Amy Marsh. Right. From the community, like to and over community garden. Okay. They're on the agenda later for the community garden. Nothing okay. you can't you know, if you so desire. Um, can I speak for a moment, please? Sure, go ahead. Hi, this is Hi, this is Grace Kostanian. Um, Good evening, everybody. And the last time I was speaking with everybody, with the board, we had asked about our pickleball program. And I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody on the board and to Eric for supporting our adult pickleball program. I think we've been playing for about six weeks now. We're playing on Tuesdays and Fridays from five to seven, and it's been very well attended. So um, thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. I'm sure Paul and Scott are representing the board incredibly well. <laughs> Bill, would you like to speak? Uh, Bill will be on in just a sec. Huh? He, this is Bill Warner. Sorry, I'm just going through the names. Joanne Ebert. I'm all set, thank you. Okay, Mark Brinker. Nothing for me, Jeff, thanks. You got it. Um, I'm assuming the last two phone numbers are Adrian and Dennis. Correct. Yeah, I can't see, but I'll assume, yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, Kathy and Mike Blasey. I'm so sorry. Oh, I know you would never forget us, Jeff. I, I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> we have been seen this other. evening. Thank you. All right. And Jed? Hello. I'm just here. Uh in support of and interest of the discussion on the down planner. Okay. All right, item three, additions and deletions to the agenda. Any of the members have anything they want to add or take away? Jeff, can I weigh in on this? Sure, what I would like ahead. to do is add under number four, B budget workshop address items I through III. Uh, item I would be a report by Bill Warner on the role of a town planner. II would be a report by Jay Tuttle on roadwork planning. And III would be discussion of public works related to sprinkler systems. And then also number five, community garden presentation. And 6A appointments, uh, appoint Christina Harkley as the accounting associate for the finance department. So I'd like to add those items and I would ask that you move item number four B, budget workshop up to the top of the agenda since Bill Warner has graciously uh, given us his time. Um, oh, in, a, in a point, in, yeah, I was gonna say in the point of interest, the presentation for the community garden is on what exactly? Uh, I think they're again asking you whether you will finance in this budget season a request so they can get started building the beds for the new gardens. Okay. Okay. Eric, do, do we need a presentation? Well, we'll 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 sit there and and, and allow them, Adrian. Let's just move that through. Um, Eric, do you have an email on those? Uh, you want me to send that to you in an email? Yeah, so I could have all the items that you want added. Sure. All right, anybody else have any? 
Anybody want to no, take I, 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 want to take away all the items that Eric asked to enter? I'm only kidding. Okay. Um, uh, no, I, 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 no. My, I guess my, my, my point simply is that you know we shouldn't be. We already have a full schedule tonight. We shouldn't be adding this much all at all at once. And you know, that's my frustration. That's all. Just okay. point of reference. Understood. Um. I don't even see where his numbering system is. Did you send that to me, Eric? I did. Okay. Okay, Eric had asked to add under item four, item 4B, a report by Will, Bill Warner on the role of the town planner, a report by Jay Tuttle on road work planning and discussions of public works related to the sprinkler systems. And he asked to add item five, under item 5A, community gardens committee presentation. And he asked to add 6A, appoint Chris, Christina Harkala as the accounting associate for the finance department, okay? Um, that goes under 6A. All right, I'll make a motion that we add those. Anybody want to second that? I'll second it, Jeff. Okay. Um, further discussion on that. Um, I realize Adrian should have had, should have had these earlier. That's yeah. more discussion. Understood. Um, anybody else? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Opposed. Okay. Uh, four one. Uh, let's move on to. Uh, and did we ask to move? Um, Eric asked to move a four B I to the beginning. So Bill Warner and the role of the town planner. So I'd like to. Uh, Can we move Bill? If we're going to do that, let's let's move Bill and Jay to the front. So Jay's sure. not stuck on here either. No he's problem. Gonna, he's going to be dealing with storm stuff. So. I, I, I'm accepting of that. So, um, Bill, since uh, you graciously uh, are attending this meeting, uh, we're going to let you go first and, and give us uh, an understanding, your understanding from all your years as a town planner and the value that Andover will receive. Bill. For Eric, waiting, waiting for my kids to finish the ice machine. Quiet down down there. Understood. So first of all, I'd like to introduce Bill Warner. Bill Warner has provided the town of Andover with some awesome planning advice over the years, uh, as well as wrote the last two plans of conservation and development. Um, he's been a planner all his life, um, and he brings a wealth of knowledge to the position. He was a board had asked me a while back to uh, supply you more information on the proposal by Jed Larson and myself to uh, hire a town planner. And I asked Bill to uh, come here to answer any questions you have so you're not getting it filtered through me, but you're hearing it directly from somebody who's a good planner. So with that, I introduce Bill Warner. Okay, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Um, my background, I was uh, the Director of Planning and Development in Middletown for 25 years. I was the, um, the Town Planner in Farmington for five years after that. And now I've been the Town Planner in Haddam, Connecticut for the last four years, which is pretty similar to Andover. Uh, Farmington and Middletown, obviously not so much as, as um, as Eric indicated, I was the town planner in Andover part-time from 2000 to 2005. In that role, I wrote the 2005 Plan of Conservation and Development, and then I was called back to write the 2015 Plan of Conservation and Development. I did your incentive housing plan, I think in 2017, which was based on a state grant that we got. Um, of, I think it was $20,000. Uh, and most recently, working with Jed, I wrote your affordable housing plan, again, using a state grant that Jed got um, from the state of Connecticut. So uh, 34 years of experience. I have a lot of experience in this, in this role. 
Um, so just just quickly, I, I tried to think today about what uh, town planner could bring to your town and what I brought to the town in 2000 and 2005. I know when I left in 2005, people people were upset that I that I was uh, I had my son was just born, so I decided I didn't need another part time job, so I left. And I know people were upset that I was leaving. Um, that's the only reason I left. I was enjoying it in Andover while I also uh, worked in Middletown. Um, so I think there's four four points that are important to bring up for a town planner, which could really benefit the town of Andover. Um, the first is probably the hardest to explain, and it's 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 about consistency. It's about establishing a vision for the town of what you want to accomplish in the town, and then having the person, the point person there that is constantly moving in that direction. Whether it's a development that comes in and trying to get uh, an improvement from that development, which will support your other plans, or whether it's applying for grants to implement some of the plans, it's really important that you show that there's a consistent person in your land use department that is pursuing that. Because in Andover, land use is, I'm sure, a big issue. Land use tying things together, sidewalks, the, the Hop River Trail, you know, new development, trying to bring in development to service uh, the people of Andover. It's all it's all a big, a big deal. And I think Andover, just like pretty much all small towns, one of the things you're really going to have to deal with is the aging population. So we know that the AARP has said that the aging population, people, <clears throat> baby boomers are very interested in aging in place. 80% of them want to just age in place. They just want to grow old in Andover. You also know that college kids are leaving and not coming back at record paces in Andover and all small towns. Uh, and so how do you deal with that really interesting dynamic, which we've been saying in your plans of development for years that the aging of the baby boom pop population is gonna be a big issue. So how do you service that population? How do you make it comfortable for those people? We addressed a lot of that in the affordable housing plan and how to how to do that. And I think from looking at the picture, a lot of us are baby boomers and a lot of us uh, can think about, OK, how are we going to downsize this? Uh, you know, do we need um, do we would we need a ramp in the future? Do we have two level house where we really like to live on one level? Is the washer and dryer in the basement? So all of those things have to be addressed and all of these things should be addressed. A planner is the one that would bring the ideas to start to establish that stuff again, that I out, uh, outlined in the affordable housing plan. So it's creating that consistent vision of what Andover should be and sticking by it and going for the long run. I know Jed said it's a marathon, not a sprint. And that is so very true. I learned that in, in Middletown for 25 years, the revitalization of downtown Middletown literally took 25 years. Um, it was a very, very long process from pretty much the bottom to now one of the most vital downtowns in, in Connecticut for sure. Um, but it took us close 25 years. So it's a long, slow process. Um, so that's the consistency and vision. In um, Andover, some examples next to you that you know of is Hebron, Connecticut. Hebron, Connecticut, if you think of Route 66, you've seen great improvement. I've seen great improvement on Route 66 in terms of the facades and the sidewalks, connecting things together. And that is a plan that Mike O'Leary came up with many, many years ago. And he was in the town of Hebron for at least 25 years uh, that, I, that I think. Um, and having him there constantly, every time a development came in, said, this is what we want to do. We want to build a sidewalk here to connect to this one. We want to have this kind of signage. We want to have to do these kinds of things. So that was putting forward the vision of what Hebron and Route 66 should look like. And that really wouldn't have happened if Mike O'Leary wasn't there pushing that, that every time. The other one is uh, Marlboro. Marlboro, Peter Hughes has been there for over 20 years and has just done a great job with the infrastructure and the sewers and the development that has occurred there. And Peter Hughes is, is a critical employee in Marlboro and he's constantly pushing for the good of Marlboro. Certainly, I know Eric does great work there, um, but there's a lot to do when you're the, when you're the town administrator. Um, there's a, more than enough work for a town administrator and a town planner. Um, so that first one is communicate, communicating, convincing the public, getting buy-in for what you're trying to accomplish and moving forward with that consistency and the vision of what you're trying to accomplish. So that's the first one. The second one is plan review. 
um, more nuts and bolts. Um, but I'm no, I know you just had an example with, with Dollar General. Um, the Dollar General is uh, the developer of Dollar General and the development team classically comes in with the bare minimum and to see what they can do, what they can get. Um, just after you finished your Dollar General, I started a Dollar General with the same developer and the same engineers in Haddam. And what we did in Haddam is we fought Dollar General. We didn't go to court. It was and and an end up being unanimously approved, but kept pushing back to get more and more and more. So what we ended up with as a Dollar General is a very well done Dollar General. I think it's the best Dollar General I could find. Um, so it's a it has a barn style look, a full roof. It has a 12 over 12 pitch. It has dormers. It has very heavy landscaping, very nice signage, very nice lighting, uh, and it is going to be a very, very attractive Dollar General. Um, and that wouldn't have happened if there wasn't a planner pushing for that. If it was just the commission, the commission doesn't have the level of experience, or the knowledge to push for things. Those aren't things that were required in your zoning regulations. How it happens is you start early on working with the developer. They come in before it ever gets to the planning and zoning and have discussions with the planner. Um, so you start early on talking to the developer what well, we really like a barn type style. So that was on Route 81 in Haddam. And we went up and down 81 and we counted eight red barns with 12 over 12 pitch roofs and a very distinctive look. And they came in with a flat roof Dollar General in a very non-commercial area, but it was a commercial zone historically. So um, we worked with them and we got, I think, a very nice um, plan. It was controversial because there was a group of people that did not want a Dollar General in their neighborhood. Uh, we had about 50, 60 people there. Um, but pretty much the consensus of the people is we don't want Dollar General. Um, sure, it's a nice looking building, but we don't want Dollar General. Um, so that is very important. And think of the impact that Dollar General is going to have on your on Route 6 and your port and what it's going to say about your town when they go by go by town of Andover and then your Dollar General. I have no idea what your Dollar General looks like or what was how it turned out. Um, I just know you had to deal with one too. So the planner is very important for plan review, making sure it meets all the requirements, making sure all the different agencies have reviewed it and seen it, making sure it meets all the legal requirements. And but all is also important is making sure it meets the architectural detail that is consistent with your town. And you will get that if you push for that because because it, because delaying it and going to court is time and money, and the developer doesn't want to deal with time and money any more than the town of Andover does. So you can get a lot out of developers to make it fit fit well into your town. So that's very important for planners. The third one is writing plans. As I indicated, I wrote your incentive housing plan, I wrote your affordable housing plan, and I wrote two plans of conservation and development. The plans of conservation and development are required. You have to update them every 10 years. So in 2025, you're going to have to update your plan of conservation and development. Uh, you're a small town. Uh, if you brought in a one of these larger consulting firms to do your plan of conservation and development, I guarantee you, you have to budget for at least $50,000 um, and probably more if you want to do a full blown plan of conservation and development. There's no reason, and I've written, I've written two plans of conservation and it's not just small town. I wrote two plans of conservation and development in Middletown, both were unanimously approved. I wrote the Farmington plan of conservation and development, it was unanimously approved. And those three plans saved tremendous amounts of money because I wrote them in house. I spent maybe 10 or $15,000 having mapping done uh, and copying and whatnot, but the staff person can write the plan of conservation and development. And I have advocated throughout my career that it should be the staff person. You shouldn't go hire out of town consultants who never been who've never been in Andover to come to Andover and write a vision for your town. It really is up to the, the planner, the one that's learning your town, that understands your town, and the plan of constant planning and zoning commission to really say this is what we want in the town. There's no reason um, you need to bring in big money and big guns to write uh, expensive plans of conservation and development. Affordable housing plans aren't required. You're required to have an affordable housing plan. You're required to update it in five years. So that's so that's even sooner that you're gonna have to do that. So um, those are probably gonna end up being in the same category as the plan of conservation and development. 
plan of conservation and development, if it's not up to date, the, the, they have a, the stick that they have, the state uses is you can't get grants from the state if your plan is not up to date. I would imagine in the next year or two, they are gonna change the statute to require you to have an affordable housing plan. And if you don't have one, you're going to have to, and you're not gonna be eligible for state grants. So that's another one that you're gonna need somebody to write these plans for you. And your stat, your enough staff person is more than capable of doing it and certainly could do that. So that that alone would be a big cost savings. So the first one is, is really creating a vision for the town. The second one is really making sure that private development reflects the image of the town that you want to reflect. As I said in Haddam, the image was a rural community, had the barn look, and it came out really nice. And then uh, writing the plan saves you a lot of money um, rather than hiring consulting firms to do that. Uh, the fourth one is uh, I was watching on your website the Yukon presentation um, of the landscape architect students doing different different ideas of what ideas they had for the town of Andover. Really great work. A lot of the stuff was stuff that we have talked about previously in plans of conservation and development on pieces of land that the town owns and what could be done with them. And really, you know, that's great. And we come up with all these ideas, and ideas are great. But the rubber hits the road when you when you when you need implementation and you really have to come up with funding. So the funding is how you implement these things. So let's say you had a piece of land in town that you decided you wanted to develop. You wanted to go out to RFP and develop it. That's something a planner would do. A planner would put together the RFP, advertise the RFP, come up with the elements of the RFP, what they wanted and how this land could be used, and then and then shop it out to the development community. So that's something that a, that a planner would also do to bring in new development to your town, which could have significant um, fiscal impacts on your town and be very positive for your town. Uh, so all of those ideas that the UConn uh, students came up with, there might be one there that's a real gem that you might want to pursue. You would need the town planner to, to really put it together and really start pursuing it and deciding what has to be done, addressing the nuts and bolts of it, the well, the septic, the details that, that need to be addressed before you put out the RFP and start dealing with developers. So that's very important. The final one is the one that small towns always look to is grants. How can we get other people's money to do this stuff? Um, and I think I, I think I provided you with um, what I've done in, in Haddam. And in Haddam in four years, I brought in four, four almost, I think it was over $4 million in grants. Uh, we're using those grants to build sidewalks, to clean up contaminated properties, and to do all kinds of different things, even to build a community septic system, because we have a, a real challenge with community septic systems in our downtown. Um, so that's getting the grants for what is what you want to accomplish. So you create the consistent vision of this is what we want to accomplish. And then you go out and you take that and you advertise that um, to find developers and to find, to find money for it. How you find money is you tell the state agencies that you have a plan that everybody's on board with and you, you need money to implement it. Uh, it is not hard at all to get state money if you have any experience in writing these grants. Right now, um, available now, you could be filling out applications now, for a community connectivity grant. That's through the DOT that's connecting, that's connecting areas together, building sidewalks, building bike paths, some either some connections to the Hop River Trail that you want to make. That's a community connectivity grant. They love giving these grants to communities that haven't taken advantage of them. Uh, so that's a good grant for you. That's up to five hundred thousand uh, dollars. All you have to do is the design, the engineering design. You do not have to build, build it, pay for any of the construction. Construction is fully covered. Um, another one is the Connecticut Community Challenge Grant, which is a minimum of a million dollar uh, grant. Uh, more challenging, uh, they look for developers and jobs, but if you had a developer that was interested in doing something, uh, you could apply for a Community Challenge Grant. I am applying for a Community Challenge Grant to build a senior center. I know you're working on one uh, to build a senior center in a school that we acquired from the regional school district, uh, put in a school, a generator, connect the school to the downtown for the seniors. Uh, so I'm working on that for a Connecticut Community Challenge grant of a million dollars. Um, another one that's out right now are brownfield grants. Uh, you don't have a lot of brownfield grants in, in your town, but I know down near where the public works garage was, I think there's some history of 
of contamination there, that's an opportunity right there for you to get $225,000 of assessment grants to look around and see if you have any of these issues that you need to deal with, that you want to deal with, that open development opportunity. So you could do, you could get one and you could do a, a study on that with your $225,000 assessment grant and come up with a whole plan of how you want to redevelop this, how you want the public works garage to look, how you want access for this, how you want to move maybe something away from the Hop River, how you want to work with that, all under that brownfield assessment study. Um, those are, are due in June, I believe. So those are out there right now too. The final one is the TRIP grant. Eric might know about this. this is the Transportation Rural Improvement Program. Brand new grant program through the DOT. There, I think, I think CROG has maybe 50 towns in it in your region. You're in the Capital Region Council of Governments. I think you have 50 or 50 or 60 towns. You are one of eight towns that are eligible for this grant, for the TRIP grant. So only, only you and seven other towns are eligible for this. This is, a, again, a great grant for rural communities, which of which you are one. We know that DOT likes to give a grant to each um, um, council of government. So your chances of getting one are probably pretty good. Uh, depends on what your other rural towns, the other real small towns in, in Andover are doing and how you put that, put that together. But that's another great opportunity for you to do some road improvements or any type of transportation improvement, uh, including sidewalks. In Haddam, we're applying for $795,000 to, to, to actually on Route 154, Saybrook Road, we have very old sidewalks that the DOT never maintained, that the town never maintained either because they were the DOTs. Uh, so they're falling apart. So we're going to rip all those up almost almost a mile and a half and replace them. Now we just finished a section of 3,000 feet of it with a connectivity grant. So we just finished that and now we're going to go into with the trip grant to complete the whole core row of sidewalks there. So those are grants that are out available right now um, that your planner could be could be applying for and putting together arguments for and to talk to state agencies and, and get. Uh, like I said, they love towns that don't haven't taken advantage of them. They like giving money to to new towns that have new projects. Um, so that's another opportunity. So there's a lot of opportunities that a planner um, could bring to um, the town that would could be cost saving, that could bring money to the town, but also could deal with all the nuts and bolts stuff that planning and zoning has to deal with. The state is, there's another big um, legislative push for affordable housing. And each time this push, they, they mandate things on the towns. You must change this, you must change that. Um, and those are all changes that you have to do and that you have to keep up with. And you really can't just ask volunteers to be doing all this stuff. So um, I would strongly uh, encourage you to think, think long and hard about creating some funding for a planning position. And that's all I have. Thank you, Bill. Sure. But that's quite a bit more than we had to start with, so thank you. Do uh, any of the members of the board have any questions for Bill? No, I mean, I will say that um, I personally was not aware of how much, how involved the planner would be in the grant process. So that's an interesting take. Um, and I think it certainly makes it easier to go to the public and ask them to fund this, you know, if they can see that they're getting value back for their dollar, you know, in, in whether it's in grants or what have you. So um, I, I think that, you know, Jed's point, though, that it's a long term thing is extremely valid. I mean, I've seen it in Wyndham where I came from, you know, they're 30, 30, 35 plus years, same thing. And but if you drive down through Wyndham now, and I can tell you as a taxpayer in Wyndham also, I, my taxes went down, you know, not not because of a reevaluation, but because they literally have brought in so much revenue from businesses, it's bring slowly bringing down the taxes. So been pretty amazing you know bill from your standpoint from the size of our town and actually having some experience with us how how many hours do you think a planner would need to invest in our town well what i was doing when i was there uh from 2000 2005 is is not a lot of hours i was going there on um I believe Monday afternoons, I would leave, I would leave Middletown with their permission. 
at two. So I'd get there on two thirty or three o'clock, and then I would stay till seven. I think I think then you were open until seven or Mondays or Thursdays or something like that, and you were open till late. And I would stay there and you know sign off on the applications and do the things that needed to be done, prepare for the the different meetings that I attended. I attended planning and zoning, zoning board of appeals, um, and any others that I was asked to attend. And then on Saturdays, I would go in for a half a day. So I would go in and get around there at nine o'clock and stay till noon. Do any, you know, the whole other thing was um, zoning enforcement. At that time, I was doing the zoning enforcement as well. So that was dealing with the guy that had a kennel who the other, the neighbor was screaming about. Uh, all these other different types of things, the junk cars and things like that. So those are all things that planners certainly can do too. Um, you know, we're trained to do that stuff and write cease and desist letters and whatnot. So those are things that, that could be done too. So I would say 10, 10 to 20 hours probably is, is more than enough. One full day is probably enough. And, you know, I mean, nowadays, nowadays, if, if you get a, if you get a good person, the person is, is working far more than what you're paying for. Really the way it works is you're, you're doing a grant you get into the grant and you're writing it, you're writing it, you're writing it. And you're, you find out, you just find, find yourself, at least I do find myself staying up all night, right, finishing the grant and, and getting it done. Um, so, you know, I, I think 10 to 20 hours is a good start. And if the planner is doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're going to be creating more and more hours for themselves because you're going to want it. So when do you want to start Bill? I, uh, I, I, I'm not available in a year. I am going to be walking the Appalachian trail. So you doing the, you doing the AT end end. Yes. April 1st. That's really neat. April 1st. I just told Hat. I just told Hat. We will be rooting for you. It's a quite a trip. Thank you. Or I may be back in a month. Who knows? Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Only 25% of the people make it. So. Okay. Um, do you, I, the one thing I see is some of the, as a challenge to us with a planner, um, there's always been this sort of divide because of the, the, the rail trail almost cuts in, in route six between the two, they almost cut the town in half, you know? Um, and I think merging that is, is something that I think we struggle with how to bring that, you know, cohesiveness together, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think the DO, the DOT, there are, there are actually statutes and laws that say the DOT should be encouraging how to slow traffic down. I know so I know one of the, the landscape architect uh, students proposed the rotary. Um, there are definitely ways to narrow, narrow the road in certain areas, right, right near the library and the church. I think that is just a logical place to create a connection, um, a safe pedestrian crossing there. And it really comes down to more activity on the street is going to slow down traffic right now. Now, um, if there's not a lot of activity on the street and you're just zipping through, you're you're like it. If you get into an area where there's where there's activity, people just naturally slow down. Like in Middletown, anywhere else. Eric, you're gonna have to start booting people. Yeah. yeah. Eric, Eric. You'd ever all right, everyone, uh, we apologize. Uh, uh, we were uh, hacked on our initial uh, meeting. Uh, we brought forth all of the members of um, uh, the meeting that we're on. Uh, I'm apologizing in advance to the public, uh, but uh, it, unforeseen um, matters. Um, one thing is to uh, text Dennis O'Brien the information, um, Eric, if you can, because I know he was on. Um, we had a presentation from Bill Warner, and he was the last good part of our presentation. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move on to um, Jay is giving us a, a report from Public Works for our budget meeting. Eric. I had your email open, but Jay, if you can go forward and give us your your report, we can get you off so you can get some sleep. Unmute. Jay, unmute. There we go. There we go. All right, thank you, everybody.
Um, first of all, I'd like to start with, uh, uh, we're talking about capital roads and tar combined, correct? That's what we're talking about right now. All right, so Eric and I were in discussions about, you know, um, obviously our startup money in the springtime and what the town uh, would be uh, a good, as far as the town having a good uh, pot of money to start the construction season. Um, and that being the TAR account, because it comes in a couple different times a year. Um, sometime typically around uh, January or August, um, pending plus minus. So, and that's usually around $93,000 and change. Uh, so, you know, give it $180,000 per year from the state for TAR. Um, so the question is, is what is a good amount of money um, that we could start with? And, and we, my thought was around 250 to $300,000. If there was that kind of money every year, not only would you have startup money uh, in the TAR account, and this is, I know we don't have that right now, but think about it for the future and how we can work towards having uh, a consistent startup uh, money. Because it's always better if we can get going early and, uh, and obviously have the funds to do that uh, prior to Jay, July Jay, 1. So Jay, haven't we had that the last couple of years? Yes and no. We've had some. We've had it. Uh, um, we. I don't know if we've had that amount of money in there. Um, two years ago, we had a good pot. Uh, last year, we used up quite a bit. Um, and of course, we had some added expenses where we kind of uh, uh, depleted those funds. Um, but getting back to the, you know, $250,000, $300,000 in that account, not only does it allow you to have startup money, but you have some emergency funds in case a storm pops up or something, you know, you got a little something to work with. Um, but that being said, uh, the budget that I'm uh, presenting tonight um, for the roads is a common use, think in your uh, heads is a combination of TAR and road monies combined. Um, and Eric, just a quick question. The, uh, the latest, uh, um, rundown I gave you just before I left this afternoon, did that get emailed out or just should talk about that? Eric? Well, maybe he'll be back on. Uh, this is this. I sent I sent him my spreadsheet that I used. It's not the it's not the one that I don't know if he had that, if he sent that to you guys. Um, but anyway, back up a little bit. I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Uh, first, we'll talk about the chip seal roads uh, for this year, the improvements. Um, see if I can you're share not going to my... be able to share your screen because you're not the host. Oh, okay. I, enabled, I just enabled share screening for Jay, so you should be able to share. Okay. okay thank you. So... All right. Oh, here we go. That's what I want to. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. No. Yes. Yes. This this one that's moving, you're seeing. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Single. All right. How's that? It's good. Perfect. All right. So, uh, talking about this year's roads um, for uh, chip seal preservation. So, we have Wheeling Road, 
Pine Ridge, Shad Blow, Dogwood, Wood, Wood Fern, Hutchinson, Times Farm, Old Coventry. Now I have the single chip in blue and in red, the uh, uh, double chip. So Pine Ridge and Shad Blow, uh, those are in pretty rough condition um, as far as the quality of the pavement, but they're still primarily together, we'll say. So we could do a double chip on that and preserve it for uh, a pretty good amount of time. So I went back, originally I had this uh, uh, through Gorman. As you can see, Gorman was the uh, contract that I reached out to in the beginning to get a quote on this for budgetary numbers. So originally I had them price it out uh, with them doing the sweeping and the uh, traffic control. And that originally came in at uh, about $221,000. And I reached back out to them just because money is the way it is these days. Uh, take out the traffic control. If we do the traffic control and we do the sweeping, um, we'll save approximately uh, $22,000. So he came back with a new price at one fifty two oh ninety four dollars for chip seal. All right. Now, if I scroll on further down, you see the map of the town here. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, I kind of mapped this out as where we are today. And uh, in red, the small, like these are around the lake and some of Bunker Hill, what we did last year, Bear Swamp, this portion along hill um, and these other roads, some of these other roads have been either chip sealed, uh, preserved in the last past three years or touched within the past five, seven years and are in fairly good shape. Um, and our goal is, is to kind of go around the town. We started in this area and then trying to make it so we're addressing our bad roads as long as well as our good roads at the same time. And so we're gonna come from this side of town. This is where we're proposing this year, these roads here. Okay, Hutchinson, Times Farm, Old Coventry. So these roads here. Um, and that's, you'll see on the list. All right. Um, this here, green, this is the, where we're talking about doing drainage work this year. And also that trip grant, uh, Hendy, uh, the last section of Long Hill, and then Skinner. All right, and this section of Skinner right now is a little bit, uh, undecided what we're going to do there depends on what the funding comes in if we get the trip grant how we're going to treat this whether we do a shim and chip on it or we could shim it and overlay it so we don't really know exactly what we're doing there but we do know we got to do the drainage here first this year so our plan this year um chip seal shim and chip and the drainage here. Uh, for 2024, which you really can't see, and unfortunately it doesn't really show up, uh, it's 4.6, this would be next year's plan. And we're trying to look in at Bailey, uh, Aspinall, Aspinall, um, I forget what that little road is, and Burnap Brook, this area, the last of Shoddy Mill, some roads over here. So you can see by this list. Any questions? No, how does it all fit into the rest of your budget? Okay. So now I've got to go back and bring up Oh. 
Did you lot did I lose the screen sharing? No. Okay. Can we see this screen here? Yeah. Yep. All right. So this is my spreadsheet that I use that I sent Eric. And this is my updated as of today. So let me. All right. So this is my summary page. So paving, patching, and it'll I'll go to through the details. 193, 250. Crack seal, 210, along with, uh, I mean, chip seal and crack sealing. Drainage, 110, 111,000. Uh, pavement markings, 25, other 60,500. So for a total of 599,742. So in the paving, from AEN, try to budget for a hundred uh, for a thousand ton of asphalt, ninety five per ton. That'd be virgin uh, asphalt for Shimon. The contractor twenty three days of labor at forty two fifty per day, ninety seven seven fifty and some cold patch that we use throughout the year for uh, any potholes. Chip sealing, approximately four miles of the preservation and chip seal, $170,000. Crack seal, it's at a, a $22 a gallon plus minus. Um, try to budget about $40,000 for crack seal. Drainage. So drain. This is the drainage area that we try to would like to complete on Hendy, uh, Long Hill, Skinner. Uh, we have approximately twenty six catch basins. Some of them would be new. Some of them are rebuilds, um, but twenty six in total. Fifteen hundred dollars a piece. Materials thirty nine thousand. Drainage pipe. 2,500 feet at approximately 2090 per foot, 52,000. Some of that pipes fit, uh, 15 inch, some's 18 inch. There's a few, couple pieces of 24 inch and uh, yeah, there's some 12 inch in there too. So um, go ahead, somebody have a question? No. Oh. The drainage flares. Those are the pieces at the end of the pipe. Six of those, approximately 2,000. Uh, eight assorted uh, adapters going from RCP to ADS pipe, concrete to plastic, 2640. Four rolls of filter fabric, 2352. And then your catch basin cleaning. Um, some of these areas, the reason for the filter fabric, uh, we've got some wet areas along the way that we're going to use some perforated pipe to absorb, uh, take up some of this groundwater that's, uh, wreaking havoc on some of the edges of the roads in the areas where we got some bad icing and poor drainage, uh, so traffic control. Basically, that's the uh, center line or paver, pavement markings. Like to budget twenty five thousand for that. Um, you know, uh, Long Hill, Shoddy, uh, the roads that we've had completed that we weren't able to, uh, and then some other roads that we weren't able to finish the last time. Um, center line striping, some sideline striping, uh, stop bars. Um, Sharrows, other got a couple areas uh, that we need to mark in the parking lot too. A couple of outliers to finish up. And the last part of this is the other 
our weather work weather works reporting that with annual service contract service contract at 1700 uh approximately 500 dollar uh 500 ton of miscellaneous uh roadbed material stone process loam at twenty thousand dollars grass seed eighteen hundred and flex beam uh flex beam i measured out that section on uh because we haven't done that in a year or two like to get back on that program and i measured the uh section on long hill from route six to um to the intersection of bear swamp and there's uh 1300 feet of the old uh wood wood rail um and so to replace that, it's $29 a foot, it's $37,000. So in total, back to the summary, I got just, call it $600,000. Eric, how does this compare to what you presented to us before? Uh, it's quite a bit more than what I presented to you before. Jay gave me this this afternoon, so that's not included in the documentation I gave you earlier uh, last week. What I what I didn't have prepared uh, the last time is I didn't have all my uh, drainage calculations for doing the drainage work on Hendy, and uh, um, you know I had some of it, but I didn't have as much as I had right that I put together right now. Okay. Uh, I've been working over the past week on this stuff and okay but well, looking at this number does this this encompasses just road work or is this encompass the things we normally use tar funds for this say that again Adrian I'm sorry I'm... so we have tar funds of 190,000 right give or take correct is this encompassing the things that we would normally use the tar funds for Yes, tar funds are included. I'm assuming. I'm assuming that tar money is in this. You know, in, the, in your five hundred ninety-nine thousand that you need. Yes, it wouldn't be five hundred ninety-nine plus another hundred and uh, okay. you know ninety thousand so dollars. Okay, so Eric asked for three seventy-five plus the one ninety. We're at five sixty-five. We're rolling it off by about thirty grand, give or take. Correct. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I just want to point something out to you, Jay, though. You said you weren't sure if you'd gotten those funds before. You were at 300000 basically the last three years in addition to your TAR funds. No, I I know we had the TAR funds. No, no, and... I'm saying outside of TAR funds, you said you need some funding somewhere around 300000 to have the money in the spring, right? And I asked you if you had had that, and you said you weren't really sure so I went and looked it up for you and verified in each of the town budgets that are on the town website. And you had that amount of money, give or take, each year. About no, Adrian, I don't think that was his point. His Jay's point was that normally the goal is to start the paving year, the work year off, which starts around April, with enough money in the bank that you're not waiting till July 1 to be able to right. do significant amounts of work. Right. So I it's not a question of the total budget it's just a question that in years past we've had the two to three hundred thousand dollars for early work but we overspent last year when yeah. we did the reclaim and repave um not overspent but we spent more than we had so we we pulled down the reserve pretty considerably right but we could i mean listen if the issue is whether or not you can start paving sooner. Is that really the issue? To You still want to spend the same amount of money this year. You just don't have that funds available to you right now, and that's your concern? Yeah, it's going to be a little tough to make sure we get going when we need to get going. You know, there's... Right. Uh, so, so the solution to that, though, is to simply go to the Board of Finance and ask them to take money out of the general fund to get you started and then agree to a transfer back to the general fund when we get the budget approved. That's why we have a general fund with, you know, several million dollars in it, so that if we need to do something like this, we can. 
So I would simply put in a request to the Board of Finance, asking them to transfer, what is it you need? 100,000, 150,000 to get going, right? And then you agree in that request that you would then transfer that amount of money back once your budget is approved. Shouldn't be that big a deal. I believe that takes a town meeting because that would be over the 0.5% of the budget. So we have a town meeting. I mean, the Board of Finance can make that decision, but I, I guess I'm pointing out that there is a solution to this, you know? It's not really our decision to be Board of Finance, but if they don't, if you don't ask them, they can't, they can't answer you. If it's that imperative, then, then we need to do that. If it's not that imperative, then why are we having the conversation? No offense. I, I just have to ask an accounting question. Um, <clears throat> why aren't those why aren't those expenses just dated July 1st? Well, we, we have to pay somebody when we have these things done. If we're we're getting work done and I get uh you know we get uh billed at the end of the month before July mm -hmm. 1. But they're 90 day pay but they're 90 day payables, aren't they? Uh not well, not all of them. Jay, let's talk about this so, offline. Yeah. Because honestly, you just got to ask the vendor to date it July 1st and it'll fall within your budget. You're going to have yeah. your budget set. It's just a, you're just, I mean, honestly, this is, this is, Adrian is 100% right. To go to a town meeting to have that answered is just ridiculous. So to me, it's just something that, we need to deal with the vendor. You need to deal with the vendor on pay. The vendor will get paid timely. It's just, you're trying to start 30, 45 days early. That's what you're asking. And it's, it's on a budget for the next fiscal year. You should be able to accomplish this. So without going to a town meeting, it's not like you're overspending your line. You're just trying to do it early because right. that works within your, your, your schedule. And I'm, I'm in hundred percent agreement with you. And, 95% of the town folk will be in agreement with you. So let's get going. So next issue. Also, the okay. question is, do we want to make a motion to add, give or take $34,000 to the road improvement fund request? Well, if I'm looking at Eric's draft 313, I guess, he had 330 in there. And now it's 375 you know yeah part part of that well pretty much all of that increase is i didn't have all my drainage numbers together uh for uh you know as far as the materials needed for that uh handy long hill right. but scanner. we're still thirty four thousand short yeah take out the line painting and you'll be back down to 10. What's the future expenditures estimate? Seventeen million dollars. Now, Jay, what's yeah. the future expenditures? There's a twenty-five thousand dollar line. It's line twenty-five. That's up. What is that for? Future oh, line twenty-five, right? There. Oh, yep. yeah. That's that's the that's uh, the, line the pavement markings. That's the center line striping, stop bars. Uh, but why is it listed under futures? When are you actually looking at paying that or doing it? Well, I put it in futures because that's my that's what I was uh, budgeting in my estimating for. Well, I didn't estimate. I got to put he put everything in futures. Adrian. Yeah, everything is in future right now. Well, then can I pay it in the future? I mean, it's kind of confusing. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Well, it's yeah, it's just it's my spreadsheet. It's the way. You know, because if you go to the traffic control, this is there. Okay. It is right there. For Twenty. This if is... if I'm going to pay it, I'm going to move it up to approved expenditures. Okay. Or this pending. This is like this is your brain. This is your brain on J. Brain on J. I guess. You know. I guess so. Yeah. All right. I, I get. So I, listen. I'll put a motion on the floor. We can just move past this. I would make a motion to approve. Add thirty-four thousand dollars to the 
road improvement fund request or proposed. That would put us at four 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 hundred and nine thousand dollars. No, um, okay, let's let's go to Jay's. Jay, go to your projection. So you got three nine five ninety nine, right? Yep, five ninety nine seventy two seven forty two. And you're subtracting out the and Adrian. I'm guessing from your board of finance days that you're subtracting out the tar money. Yep, one ninety plus three seventy five. You're thirty four short. <clears throat> okay, so 409.742 is the line item now. So that's line 305.911. Yep, it's 430 on the spreadsheet, Eric Census. Um, Eric has 375, so you were right. So 347, it's 34742. Unless I'm reading your budget request incorrectly, Eric. No, no, you're, you're not. not. So you had 375, and we need 409 742. 409 742. I would just round it up to 410 personally. Sure. Let's make it, Adrian, would you agree to that? I don't know. I feel real strange about Public Works padding their budget, but I guess I can live with it. Okay. Okay. So does anyone want to second that budget or that? I'll second it. Okay. I just have one question. I have one question for Jay. Sure. Yeah, the chip seal contractor that you're going to proposing using this year is the same one you used last year. Uh, we're still working on that. I have I have other bids too. Okay, it's my recommendation not to use that contractor because I mean that chip sealing job on Long Hill and Hendy is probably the worst I've ever seen. The roadway is coming up. It's uh, we're getting stones everywhere. Um, the dust this summer was pretty much unbearable for a lot of the neighbors. So either we can use wash stone or do something different, but um, it was it was was not was not was not it was not workable for, for most residents. What was your comment, Jay? It was wasn't what? It wasn't it wasn't the contractors. It was, I mean, it's ultimately the contractor is responsible, but it it was a fault of the stone. It was the stone where it wasn't. Uh, Wash property properly. We weren't the only town that had that problem. Um, okay, but, but you, Jay, Jay, but, who was on site? Who was on site checking that when it showed up? The contractor, and, and the I contractor. was. But I, I, you know, I, I get the, I get a, a cup of a sieve, and right. it, it meets the specs. But you don't really know what's happening until the stuff is down. And yeah, but as soon as they it, dumped it, the first the, one, somebody the, should have said, hey, this isn't what we ordered. No, the product, the product hasn't failed. It's just not the best that it should be. Well, we're, Jay, still, we're still getting up to last week. We're still getting dust off the roads and the stone is still every time you guys plow, the stone is coming up. And I mean, we've got piles of stone everywhere. I can't not drive down Hendy Road because my car is kicking it up everywhere. I mean, it's, it's kicking up on the side of my car. And other people are having the same problem. So, like, if we're going to use the same contractor, I would not be in favor of this budget. But okay, we, we got okay. we got to pick somebody else or, or remedy the situation. Why? Okay. What, Jay, Jay, why wouldn't the contractor reject that load of stone if it when they dumped the first truck, they should have known? No. I I don't have an answer for that, Adrian. I'm just and, saying, when concrete shows up on a job, the first thing we do is test it to make sure it's the right slump, right? When, yeah. I when I delivered stone, if it was washed stone and I showed up with the wrong crap, the, the contractor would reject it and say, hey, this isn't this isn't washed. This has got too much too much in it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Hey, you can't you can't see if it was how cleanly it was washed is what you're saying. Right. Right. Yeah. They, they wouldn't have noticed it 
that, you know, Jay gets a sample. He may get a five gallon bucket. He may get a cup, whatever. Right. And they say, this is what we're going to use. But when it shows up on site, it starts dumping. Somebody at that point should have said, Hey, we got an issue and called, they called the, the plant, whoever you're getting it from and said, Hey, what's with this? This isn't, this doesn't meet spec, you know, and it's their responsibility, you know, to, to call your rep or whoever you're dealing with. And they'll drive their butt down there and take a look at it and either agree with you or disagree. But at least you'd be able to say to us, we had the spec checked and it was fine. You know, I mean, I mean, we can see where that I mean, where the plows have scraped a lot of it up. I mean, I think the dirt on the stone has kept kept it from adhering to the oil. I mean, it's just it, I mean, there's tons of dirt and dust. I mean, the sides of the roads are just full of stone. And like I asked, I asked some of the public works guys if they were going to get a chance to come up and sweep because I mean, it's just it's it's un, the, there's just so much stone on the road. It's 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 unbelievable. So I mean, we'll this, be, this, we'll this, be. This, this is not against you. It's just I don't want to see the same thing happen again. We need to do this as a lessons learned, not to do right. this, not to have this happen again. And honestly, that that contractor should have been kicking us money back to pay for the sweeping. They took the they took delivery. It's their responsibility, you know. We will be sweeping again. But they should be paying for it, Jay. It shouldn't be the townspeople that pay because we got poor products. Uh, well, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. And unfortunately, with this with this type of business, with the chip seal, um, you know, it's the chip loss that we're experiencing right now uh, on some of these roads, like Hendy, for sure, from Pine Ridge up to Long Hill was a double chip. A double chip will uh, break up a little more stone than usual than on a single chip. You're always going to have a certain percentage of chip loss, no matter what. Okay. Is it, was it dust a little more dusty this year than other years? Yes, it was. Did we uh, have an issue getting the sweeping done as early as we should have done? Yes, we did. We had a problem with their sweepers. They they couldn't get contractors to come in on time. Limited contractors, and then we had our machine break down on us, and that. Put us behind the eight ball as far as how quickly we can get our machine re repaired so what what we're seeing out there and what you're seeing out there uh in my world uh is it's not something that i want to see but it's not unusual and some years are better than not well most years are better than others but sometimes this happens uh it, it met spec if the if that fails and those stones start scraping off and oil is exposed, that company is going to come back in and rechip seal those roads. Well, uh, and uh, it, uh, Jay, it's it's actually doing enough. You look at the road; it's it's being scraped up by the plows. I mean, there's sections there's sections missing right now. And again, it's you got you're you're seeing some of those sections with a with a double chip seal, and sometimes and. We got to sweep it up. We're gonna. I've been looking at it myself and keeping an eye on it. And there isn't really anything going on that isn't uh, out of the ordinary, other than yep, there's dusty material, and it 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 is damn well going to be better the next time. And if we <laughs> decide to go to another contractor, that's fine too. It's just you know um, we've had uh, uh, quotes presented. And we went with the contractor that uh, had the lesser, uh, um, you know, bid. They were fine before, and the ones before them were okay too. And we've had problems in the past of other contractors. So it, it's not a perfect chip seal is not a perfect system. Yeah, not I, a perfect I, I system. I understand that, Jay. I mean, it's I, a being a cyclist, I've ridden a lot of roads, and I know what chip seal is. But like I said, this road, I ride up it, and it's 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 by far worse than any road I've ever seen chip seal. To be honest. It is. It's bad. So, so Jay, you're basically saying this is a this is a confluence of events, and the the actual the actual wearing is acceptable, but maybe the process getting up to there wasn't too much dust initially. Whatever, whatever. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. I mean, I've seen it a lot worse than that. I'm just worried about quality control, honestly. 
Yep. It, it is my it is the one frustration I see in municipal contracting across the board, not just public works. There's an attitude that we're just going to take whatever you give us, and it is what it is, you know. And I and I, I and I abhor that attitude. I have an issue with it. So. I've 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 got them coming out looking at it, and we're we're watching it. I've got the contractor on it, but it, it's uh, right now. There's nothing. It's still within it's really spending. showing. It's got it's it. still holding in. So after, once right. we get it swept up and we get some good spring rains on it again. Um, and we'll see what happens in the summertime. But if so, if something fails, they're going to be there to fix it. There's no is doubt. Is there a way, a way to check it closer? Jay, if you get a bucket of that, can you like dump it in a, some water and see how much uh, residue is left? Right now? No. So the, the next time you oh, do it. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, there's, there's, there's sieves that we can use to check that stuff. It met state spec, but it definitely was dirtier than before. Who did we get the stone from? Becker's. The stone Becker's uh, supplies this area. A lot of a lot of towns in this area. So whether they had something going on in their pit, bottom of the pile, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, some something happened along the way. We'll keep or an eye on it. Washed directly to start with. Well, remember, Scott, we're deliberately not using the double washed stone that we used in the past. Um, and we're doing it for two reasons. One, the material we're using now is considerably cheaper. And two, the fact that it has a fair number of fines means the road generally ends up smoother than if you use all uniform size, you know, three-eighths of an inch chip seal. So there is some advantage to the crappier material, if you want to put it that way. So uh, you're, but it does so not go saying, down as nice by any means. But you're saying it was sort of purposeful then? I'm saying we deliberately don't use the double washed, you know, all quarry stone material. Okay. Which we and did we in the past. In the, you know, and we had in the past. We did with Cormer, not the last two years, but that would be like three years ago, maybe. Okay. Either three or four years ago when we used Cormer, we used a much, a fair, fair bit more expensive stone that was double washed, had a lot less fines in it. Um, we had a lot less problems with dust um, and we did fog seal afterward, but, you know, the road ended up rougher, even though we fog sealed it, then the road seems to end up with Gorman the way they do it with a crappier stone. That's how I would put it. I, I, I did disagree with you, Eric. It's it's just as rough, and I think the dust actually kept the stone from adhering to the to the oil. But it's same thing it's, to it's, me. It's, it's coming. It's coming up. I'm 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 not going to say it again, but it's coming. It's like up. it wasn't washed at all, and it just didn't stick to the oil. And it's just every time you, it plows go over it. I mean, the, when the snowstorm's over, Jay, I'll take you for a ride in my car, and I'll I'll show you what I mean. I well, I travel the road a lot, and I I see where I see. Jeff, I see it. I really yeah, do. No, it's just I can't even travel handy because it's so bad. I can't. Jay, even... Jay, just take a ride with him after you get some sleep. Jeff will okay. feel better. He'll feel better. <laughs> no, I just All want right. to show you my point of view. What what motorists are actually dealing with, and, and I'm not the only one. I've heard it from multiple people. So, Chairman McGuire, what's the? Do we still have a motion on the floor? We okay. do. We still have a motion on the floor for four ten on that line item. I'd ask that we call that motion, please. Sure. All those in favor for increasing oh. line 305 road improvement fund to $410,000. Say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Five nothing. Jay, thank you. And uh, go home and get some sleep. Yeah. Thank so you. Sorry for keeping you so late. Yeah. Good night. Good night.
Thanks, Jay. Keep the horn when you go by Jeff's house. <laughs> Pick up some what, dust. What's what's the number on what's your number on 316? I'm on no, Woodford. Don't tell him where you are, he's gonna find you. Yeah. No, I said to Adrian. All right, good night, guys. Yeah, get Adrian's house, not mine. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can do whatever you want at my house. I won't hear you, it won't matter. I'm a half mile back. <laughs> okay, so um I, I am so sorry. The the is our friends from the community garden still here? Let's let's get you guys and and if you could, you know, uh, yeah. as as quickly as possible, Jeff and group. <laughs> okay. we, it looks like something, it looks like something is blocking your camera down at the room. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Something's blocking. I can, I can see my picture in the uh, up corner, but yeah, but something's blocking the the other side. Okay. Oh, perfect. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, what we what we'd like to do is um, request funding of three thousand dollars for six um, garden beds, uh, raised garden beds, uh, twenty foot by eight foot, <laughs> with our four by four, uh, sixteen beds. Uh, we had six, 256 cubic feet of plantable area. With these new beds, we'll have 960 cubic feet. It was a problem in the last two years. The first year, we got started very late. Second year, we weren't, we were doing the um, three squash, which really weren't producing a lot of, of uh, the produce that we could bring to the, um, to the food pantries in Hebron and Andover, and that's basically what our what our aim is, uh, along with getting uh, uh, people in the community involved in the gardening, using it as a teaching tool for um, Andover Elementary students. And uh, so we need three thousand dollars to purchase the materials for which would be come out to seventy two timbers and uh, all half lapped and rebarred. We sent you a, uh, you should have had a PowerPoint um, presentation from us with sketches of uh, the garden beds, uh, the proposed bed layouts. And uh, I had made a model of, the, of a garden bed that's up in um, Eric's office for you people to look at. And the issue is that we really need to get the beds built and installed by May 1st to get the planting season this year. And we've applied for a line item on the budget um, to do repairs on the shed, uh, which would be another 2,500 to 3,000. And then we've also applied for a Hartford Foundation grant, but those monies will not be available to us until June and July. So we're kind of between uh, a rock and a hard place. Oh, so you're, you're actually you're, you're asking for emergency funding now. Don't yes, you know? as soon as possible for the three thousand dollars for materials. So, Eric, did you send that PowerPoint over to us? It's in the packet, Adrian. Okay, it's in the, it's in the meeting packet. Oh, it's in the in the big packet. Okay. Yes. Um, would you? The, hi, this is Grace. Would you like me to share? I do have um, the PowerPoint on my um, Chromebook. I can share that PowerPoint with you if it's easier. No, I I I, I was just curious. I didn't see it in the. You know, he sent over some stuff later, so oh. I thought maybe it was one of those. We got a lot of emails for this budget meeting, unfortunately. So. So. So, so Jeff and, and group, you're really not asking for money for next year's budget. You're asking us to find funding this year in this current fiscal year so that you can build the beds now. Correct. If when we do get that line item in the budget um, with the town budget, that would be going into putting a new roof, gutters and water collection and irrigation into the garden. So you're asking for two things. You're asking for money now and money next year. Money next year. Um, 
Scott, did you get a chance to, to work out? I know you had to. You yes, had I did. I, I spoke with the engineer, the okay. site engineer the other day, and uh, he sent me over a plan, the latest plan, and we went over where we would put the beds, and uh, he's going to meet me out there as soon as, and I talked to Jeff, we're all going to meet out there and um, discuss where we're going to put the beds. It's probably going to be to the southwest of uh, the reserve areas on the, in the trenches, the reserve trenches. Okay, so closer we're, to the, closer to the uh, shed, the new shed that's down there. Okay, so we're well clear of material stockpile yep. area. He's not going to, he's not going to have any problem over there. Yep. Okay. So we and the new, the, the new galleys are going to be put in the old uh, system. The yes. Old trench. Yep. No, that's fine. I was more concerned about access because we have a right. material stockpile no, area. Actually, it works out really well because they'll be able to park at the fire department and just go across okay. that way. All right, great. Um, Eric, what is the status currently of reserve of the of the reserve for this year? So we haven't really had to tap uh, much of anything from contingency. Um, you also have a pool that you could tap uh, from the building maintenance fund. It's not quite applicable to that, but it could be used for that if you so chose. So those are the two pool, pools that I know of that could potentially be used for it this year if you so chose. And you're looking for 3000 Yes. All right, I make a motion we take $3,000 out of contingency for the community center garden. I'll second that. Anyone else have any additional comments related to this? Okay, so my only question and comment is for next year, um, Jeff, Grace, and Amy, I think that's everybody there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. You, have, you, have an idea, you have an idea of what you need for next year as a number and got a good handle on that? No, we, um, we don't, and uh, it'll be substantially less once we get the shed um, finished off. Um, the, we've got a little bit of outside work, painting to finish when the weather gets better, uh, <laughs> a new roof to put on it, uh, gutters, and a water collection for um, for watering the garden and collecting that rainwater. And uh, Jim Fitting has come up with uh, an irrigation plan. Uh, which is included in the $2,500 a line item that we requesting from the from the town budget. But no, I mean, everything will pretty much be done and in place. Scott, what's the size uh, of that? What, what's the size of that shed? Uh, it's going to require, uh, I had it broke, broken down also, uh, submitted for the budget. It's two square of uh, Shakewood uh, NS uh, architecturals. And uh, storm guards, uh, two squares, uh, three pieces of drip edge. The roof, uh, total materials for the roof replacement would be, and gutters would be uh, 611 dollars And I priced out, and uh, the shed, gutters, and water collection would be approximately $265.36. Um, and then water collection container. All right, uh, I listen, that all came will, out to about twenty five hundred dollars. I will donate the roof materials and the gutter materials. You can take that off your ask. Okay, I'll donate that to you right now. What a great well, thank you, Adrian. That's fantastic, and we can get it done before July. I hope. Yep. I, you tell me when you need it, and I will get it to you. When we're, we're primarily worried about getting the beds in and usable uh, by by May first. I'll, I'll take care of your roof and your and your gutters. You you know your other stuff. You you'll get that out of contingency. So, but I'll take care of the roof Fantastic. and gutters. Too, okay, the materials. All right. So thank you. Not a problem. And, and just as a side question, what were you using your grant funding that you're applying for for? Uh, for for odds and ends um, of, of the same thing, depending on whether we got the town budget or whether we're even going to get the grant. Okay. 
but I'm assuming you're still applying for the grant. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, our our motion on the floor right now is to assist the community gardens with some money out of contingency, and I believe the total is twenty five hundred dollars. Is that accurate? No, that is not accurate. For the bed materials that I priced out about a month ago, it came to three thousand dollars. Three thousand. The twenty five hundred is separate for the shed, and Adrian's going to take wipe out a lot of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Any other comments? Yeah, I just have a quick question now. I just heard a mention of a grant. Now, if that grant gets approved, do you still need that three thousand dollars, or we need yeah, a three thousand dollars? They're not going to get the three thousand until June or July. They need the bed money now. Right. May first. They want to try to get it. Got to start growing stuff sooner rather than later. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if they get the grant money and the money from us, uh, you're going to have a big surplus, correct? No, there's two no. two separate issues. Uh, two. We're requesting the three thousand dollars as soon as possible to give us the bed materials to build the beds, and then the other money from the budget or the Hartford grant would would go into uh, working on the sheds, on the irrigation system, and water collection from the gutters. Which you said was twenty five hundred. Yes. Yes. So if you get this grant money, what would that offset? All of it. Yeah. So would you just keep the money or would you propose to give it back to the town and repayment? Uh, if we don't need it, I don't see why it shouldn't be returned to the town. Okay, that's just, but that's just my question. I was just wondering if we're going we're, to, we're double booking things if you do get the grant. No, so the 2,500 is to go to, is for the repair on the shed. The stuff that they were planning on over the course of the year, the three thousand is to get them going this year, so they can actually build permanent beds. Yep, understood, understood. But if they That's get the correct. grant, but if you get the grant, do you hold on to that for future well, needs? They, they, they may want to do a better irrigation system or a bigger collection barrel, whatever, whatever. I think Un you know. understood. I was just, I was just making sure what we're talking about. We're, 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 we're all on the same page. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, now. Uh, uh, we're looking at uh, a total of 72 timbers for the beds, uh, and we would be doing half laps of 24 half laps per per bed. So it's gonna is a lot, a fair amount of labor um, before we even put the beds in place. And we're gonna talk to the uh, the fire department or whoever we need to. Grace is gonna ask her husband Dave about who we need to talk to about. Um, having that corner of the fire department parking lot to do the labor on the beams a flat area you know this paved and easily cleaned up and working at at that waist height off of horses when you say a half lap what do you mean by that <laughs> um where you're we're working with uh six by six timbers which are about six and a half uh five and a half to five and five eighths inches so yeah. you're cutting the width of the timber. Oh, you're doing half of it out. In, in so they, corner, in, in so in they overlap corner. at the corners. That's correct. We're using 12 footers and eight footers staggered for the size to make up the 20 feet. And it's all going to be pinned with uh, rebar. This should have been in a packet with uh, with, the, with my drawings wow. and the model that you can look at, which is up in um, Eric's office. Okay, so the question is to the board is, are we willing to sit there and, and we're going to vote on this motion for the contingency funding for the beds? So do we have any other questions related to the beds to start with? Okay, uh, so we're going to call the, the $3,000 use of money from contingency for the community gardens and we're going to sit there and ask who's in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? No, I think Jeff Murray voted yes. So we voted five nothing for that. All right, I, I'm giving them a thousand towards what they needed for the roof and all that. So they really need fifteen hundred then for next year. Is that correct? Would that that meet you, Jeff? Or uh, well, 
Uh, th yes, these were all estimated um, last last summer. So hopefully the prices haven't gone up too badly. They've actually gone down, so you should be okay. That would be excellent. <laughs> all right. So so I'll put a motion on the floor for fifteen hundred dollars for next year for the community center. Community garden. Yeah, community garden. Sorry, community garden scar. Fifteen hundred. A second. What line on? Oh God, don't make try to figure this out. Pick it. Do you have Do you have anything in there? Do we have anything in the in the spreadsheet now? I was almost going to say you put that under. Man, it doesn't really fit. I mean, there's no commission budget established at this point for the community garden. You could either, I mean, I would have to ask the the treasurer what that line item should be. But, you know, I can certainly put it in now and we can figure out what it should be called. Can we propose 305-916 community center or, or uh, community garden? Uh, three hundred five transfer line. So I don't think that that's put necessarily it, put appropriate. It, put it under the recreation commission and put a new line item under the recreation commission. For yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Okay. So, who made that motion? I did. Scott seconded, or Paul seconded. I don't know. Paul is seconded. All right. Paul seconded. Okay. Sorry, Scott. I'll get you next time. Uh, further questions on the additional funding? Okay. All those in favor of an additional 1500 for the 2022-2020, no, no, sorry, 2023-2024 budget. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, I have nothing again. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Community Garden Group. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much, everybody. Right. We greatly appreciate it. How soon do you think we would get this funding so I could place an order to have the materials delivered? Um, well, the Board of Finance okay. will have to have to approve it, right, John? Okay. Yes. Uh, the contingency funding? Uh, yeah. Work that out with Eric, John, if you would. Thank you very much. Okay, where are we at? So if you wanna stay on budget related stuff directly, you know, the last item, you know, you asked to address the two things were the, uh, and unfortunately we, Jay left, but discussion with public works related to the sprinkler system versus bringing on an outside person. Um, I did discuss this with Jay. He did want to meet with Scott, but I don't know that he had. But Jay seemed to think that public works with their existing personnel could take that on if you just want somebody to go down there every day and uh, monitor the system. Um, he seemed to think that would be within their capabilities with their existing staffing. Um, but I don't know if that's what Scott wanted to propose. Scott, do you want to talk about what needs to happen on the irrigation system? Um, how much do we need a part-time seasonal employee to do work in the town? Are we trying to save that money this year? Oh, yeah, that got brought up. Eric had pulled that, didn't he? Oh, it's I still in there. It, it's still in there. I, I still did in not there. pull it. You had asked for that to be a topic of discussion when Scott was around because Scott was the one that originally wanted, felt that that was appropriate. So that hasn't been touched. Okay, so Scott, again, are you okay with Public Works handling the irrigation system? I am, Jeff. And I guess in the, uh, we're going to save some money for the seasonal employee, but do we need a seasonal employee? I talked to Jay about this too, you know, a month or so ago. And he said that one of the reasons why 
couldn't have a seasonal employee is because he needs a truck for them. He would need a truck. Okay. But I, I, I do believe that uh, he, could, he could check it. Somebody in the town needs to start to be responsible for that uh, field. Scott could die tomorrow. You know? Yeah. You can't. You've got people to take care of, Scott. Yeah, Scott, don't say that. <laughs> um, well, well I, I mean, mean, listen, Scott, I would love to do everything. And yes, we probably do need a seasonal employee to, to do more of the mowing and the cutting, but we were already, um, the proposed budget is already above last year's. Well, actually not. Eric, am I reading? Oh, that's your, is that your, what was actually the final budget, Eric? For what? 12.6, and now we're at 12.5. Well, you're gonna be higher than that. So, so we're still slightly under last year's total number. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, I would I would sit there and recommend Scott that we we push the seasonal employee off for another year, and with the with the understanding that Public Works is going to take over the management or the the safeguarding the irrigation system at the field. Is that acceptable to you? Yeah. Yeah. For this year. Can I make a suggestion that you keep in that line item $2,500? Because we typically spend roughly that money subbing out and using other town people as road guards, um, you know, because it's cheaper during the day to hire somebody inexpensively and keep public works, you know, employees doing public works stuff. So it doesn't need to be, you know, 22,500, but it should probably be about 2,500, which is what we typically run in that salary line item. That would be my suggestion. Don't we have traffic control under? Under Jay's budget that he just gave us? Yes. But if you look at what he has under traffic control, he's calling the center line striping traffic control. No, I thought he had a different line. Of... Okay. All right. So let's go to that line item. That's 301-111-51522, temp public work salary. Can you repeat that one again, Eric? Sure. It's 301-111-51522. And that's under the Public Works Department, which is 4399. Okay, so we had 2,500 in that line item last year. Correct. How much of it did you use? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I bet a fair bit of it. Okay. I don't have that off the top of my head. Okay. So then, so I'll sit there and I'll make a motion to reduce line. I mean, do we need that? 301, 301, 111, 51520 to $2,500. Anyone want to second that? Let's go. I'll second it. Okay. Further discussion on lowering that line item? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, five nothing. All right, let's get going.
All right, are there any other budget items that we need to sit there and deal with there? So the last thing would be the decision on whether you do or do not want to go with the down plan. That's the last that I know of decision that you have left out there. And what line item do you have that under currently? Uh, so there are a bunch of lines that would change. 423, uh, line 423, which is POCD capital. Um, 403, which is legal and professional, would change. And then uh, line 121 for town planner. Those are the three that would be affected by that. They should all be green, so they're easy to see. They're not easy to find. Okay, so right now you have 6,500 in that line. Uh, so the town planner line item, which is number 121, I'm talking about the Excel column, 121, is $36,000. And is, then, that, is that a line that should be green? Is it that is what you're green. saying? It's, yeah. Okay. It's, it's row 121. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you go down to row 423, which is POCD capital, a fund, that can be reduced to zero if we're going on this plan. Um, and then the other line that can be reduced is line 403, legal and professional services, that can be reduced by $5,000. Um, so those three changes net a difference of about $26,000. Well, you had the adjustment to J's too, right? Yes, that's already, uh, yes. I'm just talking about the adjustments related to hiring a town plan. So Eric, so just so I get it, I see 36,000 added under 121, under 402, you have 6,500. That can be changed to 5,000? No, that was changed. That was decreased from eleven thousand five hundred, which is what Jed requested, down to sixty five hundred. Okay. Because you still need a minimum amount of money to pay the town's attorney for legal stuff. Oh, understood. But you you no longer need the professional component because that will be handled by the planner. Okay, so we're looking for a, an additional increase of $26,000 that's already in this proposed budget that you had sent us on the 13th. Correct. Okay, so does anyone wanna make a motion on the move forward on a planner? And how many hours is this for, Eric? This would be for one full day a week. One full day a week. Okay. Which is. Who wants to make a motion on this one? I'll make a motion to add the town planner. I'll second. One full day, one full day per week. I'll second. Do we need a dollar amount or no? $26,000. Additional funding. 
you want to add that, Adrian, to your motion, or you don't care? I, I, were we, are we putting a specific dollar amount on it? Does Eric have finalized numbers? That's what he just walked through with us. I know, but yeah. it's finalized or projected. We do. So the way this is going to work, so that you know, because um, this is a little convoluted, we're taking money from two line items, the POCD. We're not going to fund the POCD implementation fund. That's going to net us some money, and we're going to reduce what we've been spending for the legal and professional line item for the planning and zoning commission. And then we're going to spend 30, we're going to budget $36,000 for the town planner. And we're going to add an additional 12,000 that we're going to transfer from the POCD implementation fund that's specifically for the POCD to pay for the planner this year and do the same thing next year because we have money in that fund right now. And the goal for the individual for the next two years is primarily the plan of conservation and development. And also work on affordable housing. Okay, so, yes. so what's, the num what's, the, what's the number that we wanna add? 26,000. All right, so I add, I amend the motion to add 26, to add $26,000 to the budget for the town planner. I'll second. Okay. Further discussion? Yeah, I just want to say I was on the fence until I heard the town planner, the projected town planner speak. Um, I think in in addition to what Adrian mentioned about the grants, I think uh, when he mentioned addressing the blight, I think we have uh, like about 12 properties in this town that need some serious attention going forward. And if you can help us with that, um, I'd be supportive of that as well. So. I will be voting yes. Anyone else? Scott? I'm in favor. Oh. <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Five, nothing. Okay. So since we're on uh, land use, uh, Jed Larson asked us to add more hours to uh, this, our zoning enforcement office. Are, are these just popping up now? I, I, I understand why that Eric doesn't already have this. It wasn't in his original budget request. Well, uh -huh. yes, yes, it was, and he did that publicly. I. I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't think I changed the budget request that he submitted um you know i also think that you're hiring a town planner you're going to shift a bunch of that load to the town planner um you could theoretically add four hours a week to jim and get him up to 19 hours but you can't go more than that because you're going to essentially have to make him a benefits employee if you do that hey i motion to add four hours to Jim Halsey's hours to 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 add all these hours for, for blight enforcement. Do we have a number for it, Scott? Excuse me. Do we know what the number is? How many extra hours? How much dollars? How much dollars are we adding to the line? So, okay. give me about ten minutes. Go on to something else and I'll calculate it and come back to you with a number. I can't do that off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll do that if that's something that you want to do. Well, is it this line 8, 817 100, Zoning agent salary. Correct. You have it 24,249. 61 and it's 15 hours. Correct. And so we're assuming it's 15 hours times 52. Correct. So it bumps it up to a roughly 30,400, something in that ballpark.
So that would move Jim from 780 hours a year to 988. 208 additional hours. Six thousand five hundred additional dollars. And so, Scott, you're you're thinking that that sixty five hundred of those additional four hours will allow Jim additional time to execute the work that he has on his plate already. I hope so. I, I would, you know, Eric's in charge of him, but it'd be nice if he could work one day on explicitly, you know, the blight ordinance stuff until it's completed. Okay, any other members have any comments related to this request? Eric, before we vote on this, can you sit there and just give us your opinion from the town administrator's position. I mean, the thought that crosses my mind is, is that where we need the effort the most? Um, do I think we need more enforcement of blight? Sure. Do I, sh do I wish I had more resources to pour into it? Yes. But I think about that in a lot of different areas. Um, you know, this is a position that we've taken from five hours, you know, to 10 hours to 15 hours in the last, you know, two to three years. So we've seen a pretty big increase in that. And we're also hiring somebody one full day a week to act as a town planner, which will take some of that responsibility off of his shoulders. So we should have more time to deal with blight anyway. Um, but would an extra four hours be helpful? Sure. That's how I would put it. That's that's like saying anything about this town. More would be better. But do we have I, any I mean, resources? I appreciate the ask, and I'll, but I I would like to see how the town planner plays into this. You know, as we go forward, before we add any more. I, I think Eric's point is valid that we have added a lot of time to this you know, to, to all these departments, and now we're adding another day, you know, with a town planner. I'd like to see how that plays out budget-wise. And, and, you know, or I'd like to see how that plays out in office before we talk about adding this to the budget, you know, from a budget point of view, so. Yeah, and I'm supporting Adrian's viewpoint. I think I'd want to test drive the planner and see what he can do with fresh eyes on the blade yeah. situation. I mean, in truth, I probably wouldn't use the town planner's time to deal with blight issues. Um, if you not really want that. to, we can. That's oh. not what we're hiring him for. Right. We're hiring him for specialized things. Right. Yeah, but he said he would address, he would help address that if, if needed. So yeah, maybe right. in his third, maybe in his third year. Well, but let's let's see what happens. I, I you know, we're, we're putting a lot of money into those departments in general in the last three years. I mean, those budgets have gone up dramatically in the last three years. And we've yeah. added we've, we've added hours to the, the enforcement officer, and I really haven't right. seen any action on some of the properties, especially the two properties on Long Hill. I mean, they've gotten worse, and it seems like nothing's been happening. So, now, what what would the rest of the board's um, ideas be on this? This issue then. What steps would you guys like to take to see that this blight problem is resolved? This was just my idea. What are your what are you what's everybody else's ideas? I mean, I, I've been candid. I would like to see how this plays out with another person in the department taking some of the other loads off of, you know, we're 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 talking about adding another person and some expertise. I, yeah. Whether whether they're directly working on that problem or they're working on other problems and lightening the load, you know, other uh, of other things, you know, we've also added some more time into the into the building officials, you know, line this year. So I kind of feel like we're we're adding. It's I always have believed that you add incrementally 
to kind of get to where you need to go. You know, just like we've done with public works, it's, it's slowly been ramped up over the last five years to the point where we're, we're getting close to where we need to be. Right. You know, and I think you do that because it's a lot harder to, a lot harder to take it back than it is to put it in. All right. You know, well, you're, you're taking a guy, the point, the point of conservation development, you know, when we had a meeting with the guy last week, it's, it's going to take a year of his work up to 18 months to do just the POCD. Yep. That's that's without him working on anything else. <clears throat> and he's also going to be working on, you know, affordable housing after that. So mm -hmm. you're going to you're going to get a guy that you pay one hundred and twenty five dollars an hour to go and work on zoning enforcement issues. It doesn't seem well, Scott, not a, I don't think he's going to directly address it, but maybe try to guide their enforcement officer to be a little bit more effective or some try some new strategies to try to deal with the issue because obviously what we're doing not right now is not working not working we need we need it we need a new approach to, to dealing with the issue and maybe he'll have some new ideas for the, that we can act and and, and Scott, work exactly. to clean up these properties uh, i think what jeff's trying to say is that it's that water cooler effect when you have more people interacting on a problem it isn't always that that new person coming in is addressing the problem themselves it's that they're bringing a different level of experience or expertise to the table. You know, he may have, hey, you know, in our other town, this is what we did, or this is a this is a, a an approach that we can take, and and so you end up with, you know, a group effort to come up with a solution. Just like you're asking all of us what the solution is, you're going to have that same type of effect in that office. So that's why I'd like to sort of wait and see how this plays out. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, maybe throwing hours at that department isn't working because maybe there's some sort of problem in that part. Department. Don't know, but maybe that'll some, be something that comes to light as well. We don't know. I don't. I wouldn't assume that. I think. I think it's just that as a small town, we don't have the amount of resources that some of these bigger towns. And listen, bigger towns struggle with it too. I mean, look at if you go, if you go up East Street and look at that house that they that you know that the town of Hebron struggled with for how long. And you know, and they're just now finally getting some ground, and they've been they've been in court with that guy for five years. So <clears throat> they're not easy. These are not easy things. You know. Yeah, in the case recently, a town of South Windsor had to, you know, they had to acquire a property and um, demolish it. It was a substantial cost to the taxpayers. So, yep. I mean, it's it's every town's got the problem. So, well, the the only thing that I would sit there and say on the blight issue is that. You know, we did pass an ordinance and we put some teeth into the ordinance. We should be taking advantage of it. And if we have to lean the properties, we should be leaning the properties. Yeah, but Jeff, nothing has been done at all about any of that no, no. for since we've enacted that, that ordinance. Not a thing has happened. And well, it needs to, Scott. I agree. It needs to, something. What's the, so what's the answer? So maybe what we do this year coming up is we sit there and we we expect more of the zoning enforcement agent officer as he currently exists. And then if we determine that he's actually doing something to, uh, you know, follow the guidelines that are in that ordinance and he needs more time, then you put it in. Look, I don't know. You know, I want to right now if it's just we just don't know what is going on related to that. And so right. maybe it's more we um, we shined a big light on public works three years ago. The last, you know, last year we, you know, we started looking at staffing two years ago, you know, overall in the town hall. This past year we've we've put a lot of effort into the community center and some of the some of the things that the town needed to to clean up. Um maybe this year that the focus Scott needs to be zoning enforcement and zoning you know well, why don't we um just i just want to ask the town attorney i mean nothing just make sure that i'm not off nothing's happened related to zoning enforcement has it in any of the liens in any of the properties i've been working with jim lately <clears throat> and um he's learning how to the you know the ropes and how to how to do these things the blight ordinance is to a layperson, probably is a little complicated, but to me, it's not. I wrote it, 
And uh, I've spent a lot of time with them lately. And you know, when you when I spend time with working with somebody, you know, it's, it doesn't really costing you anything because you're not paying me any more for my hours. And that's okay, I'm not complaining. But uh, he's, he's into it and he's learned. I'm working with him on one property right now and now he knows what he has to do. The other thing is, is you do not have, you know, I've left zoning alone because I'm not the zoning attorney, but you, do, you should have a zoning ordinance that allows you to find people for zoning violations and you don't have one. I put one in every other town I've been in, but because I don't do zoning, I haven't done one here. And you've had a, you, you you have zoning issues that if you were going to do anything about it, you'd have to sue in court, and that takes a long time. But I can tell you this: the blight ordinance in Will, in Wyndham, they're making lots of money on it. It takes time. It, once you get going, though, you're not going to have as many blighted properties in the long run that Wyndham has. But you know what? If you've got as many as you say, and I don't know, I just know what is brought to my attention. Of course, I don't live in the town, but I'm working with him on one of these properties and there's several notices that have to be done and we're doing it. And I've been spending some time with him lately and he's he's catching on to it. And once he, I do a few with him, he's going to know exactly what to do. And I think, uh, I think he's up to it. I, I don't know, you know, I think he's doing all kinds of other stuff too, in terms of code enforcement. You have a building official that is supposed to be the housing code enforcement officer, but in fact, that's not happening. So this guy, uh, Jim, is doing uh, housing code enforcement as well. And that's something new too, because the town hasn't been doing that. So I, I you know, and I have a lot of experience in those fields, so I understand it, but it's not simple because it requires all kinds of procedural steps before you can uh, have a, a, a property determined blighted and then eventually lean it. You can't just slap a lien on it. When I first worked with Jim, he thought he could just go and, you know, and slap a lien on the on the land records. And that's not it doesn't work that way. But once you get going, once you get a bunch of these things in in the pipeline, uh, they pay off because uh, you can lien the property. You're not going to get paid off right away, but if there's a foreclosure, you will by either the town or somebody else. Now I promised Jeff I wouldn't spend much time on this, but you know it is it's a lot more complicated than than anybody thinks. It's and Jim Hallisey is catching on to it because I've been uh, I've been spending some time with him lately and uh, spent some time with him lately on a couple of very difficult cases uh, in town hall just just this past week. I, as far as what how many hours he needs, I don't know, uh, but I I would think that uh, it's worthwhile if if you're really that concerned about blight, it's not going to be done by the town planner. Not a, not okay. a town planner that's working eight hours a week. No way. All right. All right. So. No way. So the wrong, wrong guy to be put in, in, in into that position. Don't forget, you're not going to get Bill War Bill Warner. You're not going to get. Some, it's going to be hard to find somebody who's really, really good to work eight hours a week as a town planner. I know in small towns, it's it's really hard to get part time work for professional staff. Not easy. You'll find somebody if you keep looking, but you're not going to get uh, Bill Warner. Not with all his experience. I know. Well, thanks for yeah. thanks for turning us on, Dennis. We feel way better about this now. Well, so uh, it's it's so you know, it's so, more complicated than you think, but I think it's it's a worthwhile thing. If you're that concerned about blight, if you if you really have twelve blighted properties in town, then uh, let's go for it. Okay, but, so he's going to need me to help him uh, uh, with the first few. But the way the ordinance is set up, the town attorney doesn't have to be involved once he gets the hang of it. Okay, so we're going to. Um, ask Dennis that you sit there and assist Jim Halsey on the first couple cases because there does appear to be, you know, a half a dozen to a dozen properties that need some TLC and some pressure. So I've already started. Okay. So Scott, the question is, do we sit there and add, try to add those hours to this year's budget or do we push that off and see how everything progresses? Up to you. You guys already told me no. So, well, Paul and I didn't tell you no. <laughs> I would sit there if, if 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 Jim is on on the correct path now. Um, some extra hours 
maybe he he wants to work some extra hours now that he knows how to do it from Dennis and he can get Dennis going. Maybe he'll get inspired and you know put it, give him a few extra hours and get this on the road. Maybe we could cut it back after that. You'll never cut it back. So the question is, does he does he take the time he's currently doing that he may not be as productive with and become more productive? Well, if he has Dennis working with him, he'll be more productive. Uh, I'd like to call the motion on call the motion, please. I don't think anyone seconded it. So there is no motion on the floor. So we had a lot of discussion without a second, basically. Correct. That's what you guys did. <laughs> That's what you did. So, all right. Um, all right. Uh, I would sit there and tell you that, uh, Scott, that I would be, I would be more, I would rather it sit there and see if we can train, we use Dennis as a training tool to sit there and prove the enforcement of the blight ordinance. That would be me. So. And we won't put Paula on the spot because she doesn't need to be put on the spot. Okay, so let's try to move on to next issues. So, Eric, I didn't see anything on a treasurer's report in my package. Am I missing something? No, you're not. And look, I apologize. I was sick as a dog when all this stuff happened early in the week. So I did not look over any of this material before it got out. So there's there's a bunch of things that are missing. Um, so definitely not there. Okay. Well, why don't you give us an update on a summary of the audit status, at least, so we understand what's up. Sure. So... I uh, spoke to Cheryl about a week ago. Her plan was by the end of this week to have everything fully to the auditor. I haven't talked to her about it in a week, but that's my goal uh, in the next day or so. Um, engage her on two things. One, where we are in the audit. Um, you know, I've been keeping her up abreast of the budget stuff and then start talking about the plan for training the new assistant the new finance assistant. Um, so with a little luck, we'll have everything to Mike, uh, hopefully by this weekend. That's my goal anyway, but. Okay. All right. Um, appointments, we had an appointment on line six. Yes. So myself and Adrian and a member of the Board of Finance uh, interviewed a series of candidates for the Joanne, accounting Joanne, associate Joanne. position. Uh, and the uh, group decision was to offer the job to Christina Hartley. Um, we then asked the uh, treasurer, Cheryl, to interview her also and decide whether she felt she was suitable for the, the task. And Cheryl also gave her a, uh, you know, a positive recommendation. So on that basis, um, we sent her an offer letter, which she accepted um, with the goal of starting her basically a week from today, presuming you all agree with that. Okay. All right. Somebody want to make a motion to appoint Christina? What's her last name? Harkley. 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 Saying that right, I think. Harkley. Harkley. Yeah. Harkley. I think. Motion to appoint Christina Harkley to the. Um, what are we actually calling that position at this point? The accounting associate. Accounting associate position. Thank you. I'll second. All right. Further discussion, all those in favor, aye. 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 All right, five, nothing. Um, Eric, any resignations? Uh, no resignations. Okay. Uh, a short town administrator's report? Yeah, super short. Um, so the trip grant, we made the first cut. Uh, we got selected by CROG as one of the four uh, applications from our region, so that was really good. Um, the really good news was that um, 
uh, the top three, we were the third ranked grant application that came out of this, uh, the Krog region, but we were, there were only three points separating out of a hundred separating the top three. So I think we put together a really good competitive grant for that. So that's a good sign. Still hoping like hell the DOT funds that. Uh, rec trails I asked today, sure. but I Can didn't I ask get. That, sorry. Can I go back one step on that trip grant? Sure. Um, Bill Warner said there were only possible six small rural towns that can compete for that grant. Uh, actually, there are nine in our region. It varies region to region. Um, so there are nine, and there were only four accepted from our yeah, region. Only four got forwarded on. So okay. basically, what the DOT does is just like lots of, they use the uh, COG as the initial rater and criteria. And then each COG gets to put forth a certain number of grants from that COG as things they think should be funded. Okay. So we were one of those. So uh, um, hopefully we will end up getting funded on that. Um, Rec Trails grant was submitted last month. It's too early to tell uh, whether we're gonna, uh, how that one's gonna do. Um, hopefully I'll know in another month or so. Um, as a couple people have alluded to, we've had a couple very complicated rent or rental situations um, in Andover lately that are ongoing. Um, you know, I sent you the pictures from one particular resident in town. Uh, that one, in addition to the blight, that one is also going to involve a housing code enforcement, building code enforcement health code enforcement, and uh, it's a rent or rental situation. So that one right now is proving to be an ongoing uh, annoyance um, all the way around. Um, that's pretty much all I have, unless you have specific questions. I mean, lately I've been, my focus has been the budget more than anything else. So I don't have a lot else to-, to Are talk. people still living in that residence, Eric? Officially, no. They're living in the trailer behind the residence, but not in the residence. So, uh, folks, I'm sorry. I have to. I have to get off real quick. Um, we are having a meeting on uh, Thursday for the final stuff that goes. Uh, that's going to be with the community center. So, hopefully, after that, we should have the contractor. Hopefully, can come back to us within a, a week or two with the the, the contracts to sign. So. Um, but I'm sorry, I got to hop off. Okay. Um, let's move on to old business and let's sit there and see if we can go through this. We already did a, the grant for the community gardens. Uh, Adrian just gave us a, a status on the community center RFP to any of the other members, uh, Jeff or Scott have anything to add? No. no? Okay. No. Uh, Hop River Homes update. So I sent you a while back. Um, their board met. They were mostly in agreement with uh, the contract we sent them. They had a series of questions for me related to, we had also proposed putting a trench across the road so we could put in water and electricity. Um, and they immediately became concerned that we were going to put up lights and and a bunch of other things. Um, I assured them that was not our intention. Um, she said she would bring that back to the board, but my suggestion is we just take that out of the contract for now because everything else in that contract they would agree to um, and just me sign the contract with that out, send it back to them and see whether we can get a signature so we get going. Um, but that's a modification of what you would agreed on before. so you would have to be okay with that. Um, I think you're gonna need water there. How long is this contract for? They didn't have a problem with water there. They had a problem with running electricity over there also. How are you going to get water if you don't have electricity? We're Stopping. gonna trench over and connect it to our existing irrigation system. 
Okay. Gravity. Too expensive to, to do a new well. So we're just simply talking about trenching across the road and putting a, a head on the other side. Okay, and then take take the electricity out for right now. Are you okay with that and then me signing the contract and getting it right back to them? Anybody else on here have a problem with it? It's a three-year contract, you asked. Okay, three years. Yep. There's nothing saying we can't put a conduit in the ground and just bury it underneath and for future use. If we're going to trench, you might as well put it under there. I, I don't disagree with you. That that makes perfect sense to me. Well, yeah, like just we just don't put electricity in. But in the future, in three years from now, if we decide to put electricity in, we, we do it. We have the we have the infrastructure. So okay, take it out. Take the, yeah, take the electricity out of the contract, but actually okay. put the conduit in. Okay. Okay. Um, Recognizing Andover residents, Paula, do you want to talk about that or do you want to delay that till our next meeting? We can we can talk about that next meeting. I I need a little more time on that anyway. Okay. Uh the cool program contract. Did we hear back from did you get it, anything from Kerma today? I that? did not. I followed up with an email and a phone call, but I have not gotten a response from them. Um they have the latest contract that got sent to us. Um, I know Dennis had some concerns with that, um, but I have not gotten a review of that from Perma yet. Well, if you if you want to hear from me, my my main concern about it was they took out the uh, section that allowed us or them to opt out of the contract, and if uh, we violate it or if they violate it, and that's standard lane, that's that's standard stuff that that goes in every contract. So I would I would I would you know I would think we want to put that in. I mean, I know they think that they're going to do everything perfectly, but uh, and maybe they will. But as a lawyer, I can't, you know, endorse that. No, I can't endorse that. I mean, you know, there's always there's a way out of any contract if the other side doesn't comply, and it should be in writing. Uh, the other thing was, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, with the uh, insurance, they uh, our insurer has already said to us that they didn't recommend us allowing them to uh, uh, them to use our insurance as a secondary insurer if they didn't have more than a million dollars of general coverage and i guess this latest version calls for two million dollars of general coverage and as long as they're they're doing that the insurer may approve but as paula just said that we need to get the approval from our insurer i believe i think that would be a good idea so we're you know we're almost there but not quite Eric? Yep. Okay. Did you did you write that all down? So, so Eric, Eric and I will work on that. I mean, it really comes back to you as a board and what you're comfortable with. I'm not trying to tell you what you should, you know, we, we've batted around probably six or seven versions of this contract. At least. Um, are we ever going to get a version that everybody's happy with? I don't know. You know, at some point. Well, this, this standard language in a contract should be in there. Get, get a version that, that, that our insurance company can agree with and our town attorney can agree with, and then we'll vote yes. Let's go. Yeah. So we who's just, who's saying $2 million, by the way, for liability? Is it um, insurance care? I, I think they said they've got that much coverage now, Jeff. Okay. Because usually, like, for our events in town, for running events and stuff, we always require, like, a, a million dollars in the past, so. That's why I was just wondering why we, that two million dollars number came. That two million came up. Uh, that I, our insurer already said in comments to a previous draft, Jeff, that a million wasn't enough. Okay. And um, you know, I don't know. I really don't. You know, I have no strong feelings about that anyway. But I know this. You know, some kind of huge disaster, I guess, could happen. Okay. Well, we need to probably revisit anybody that wants to do any permits or anything on site because I think usually before we required a million. So we may want to revisit anybody else that wants to permit an event. Okay. Depends, I think it depends on the scope of the event. This is a big, big project, a summer day camp and a yeah. you know, before. We've, we've, we've allowed running races with a million dollars coverage. So that's why I'm just wondering. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. And one other thing relative to the cool contract is I think part of the reason that they 
cool as an organization didn't feel it was appropriate for the town to have an opt out was because they felt the school had the opt out anyway. So having the town and the school both the ability to kick them out, they weren't too excited about. You know what? You're right. You're right. And and that that issue comes up all the time. Whenever we, I hate to bring this up, whenever we deal with the uh, board of education and the, you know, the un understanding where the lines are drawn. You're right. So they 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 see themselves as dealing with the board of education. So why deal with us? I, I don't think we've had a contract before, and they've been operating for quite a while. That is correct. That is correct. Once again. I think next month, let's wait to hear back from Kerma, see what they what their feedback is, and then we can talk a little more about these other things too. Okay. Uh, Finance Department Employment uh, 9F, we've discussed 9G and over personal policy discussion. Do we want to do it at this meeting? No. Okay, no. good. Uh, 9H, the discussion of senior transportation, electric vehicle research, and the review of a 15 passenger bus acquisition and usage. I think we can skip that. Also, you've already made a decision to fund the senior transportation vehicle in the next budget. So that should be wiped. Okay. Um, new business discussion. There's nothing to it. We are no new business. We're dealing with budgets. Okay, fine. Approval of uh, minute meetings for uh, Monday, February 14th, Thursday, February 23rd, and Monday, February 27th. I make a motion to accept the meeting minutes for March 13th, 2023, the regular meeting and budget workshop, Monday, February 14th, 2023, regular meeting minutes, Thursday, February 23, 2023, budget workshop minutes. Monday, February 27th, 2023, budget workshop minutes. I'd just, like, I'd just like to amend, Paul. I think, Paul, you included the 313, didn't you? That's the footer for the... Uh, oh, I did. So Wait. we just need to include A, B, and C. That's all. Just amend to include February 14th, February 23rd, and February 27th. Good catch. Good catch. Yes. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Eric, on item 12, budget appropriation transfers over expenditure requests. And, and do we have anything? Uh, there are none on that. Okay. Uh, the tax collectors report refund requests. I did not see any in the package. Uh, before we go to that, is are you at this point, is the board at this point ready to pass the meeting along? to uh, or pass the budget along to the Board of Finance? Or what do you still want to see if that's not the case? Have we, so let's just take 20 seconds. Did we cover everything that we mentioned last time, Eric? Yes, we list? did. Okay. So all your green highlights are the items that we had to discuss at this meeting. Correct, the green and yellow highlights. So uh, the only yellow highlight was the road down, improvement man. fund. Uh, so I made all the corrections on the fly. And presuming that's all right, that yields us a final total expenditures of $12,512,765.52, um, which results in a mill rate decrease from 31.91 last year to 31.65 this year. Why don't I just show my screen instead of telling you this verbally, sorry. Okay. Are you seeing the screen now? Yes. Yeah, you just gotta increase it a lot. <laughs> Unless my eyes are bad. There you go. Hard to get the whole thing on one side. Let me drop it down a little bit. It's fine. Just could you increase your no, maybe not. It's it just go up. So you got So 
So total expenditures are decreasing compared to last year, but so is estimated revenue. Now this estimated revenue includes um, the governor's budget, so which decreases ECS funding um, as well as loss of revenue projected in the building department and loss of revenue in the town clerk's office, just because there's a lot less home sales and home sales are a big driver of, of profits, not profits, but uh, money taken in by the town clerk's office. So we're, we're actually down on a budgetary basis, but down more on an estimated revenue stamp. Correct, correct. Now, I mean, depending on what the legislature does, you know, that could change a lot. If you take the town's contribution to that, you know, there's probably about $50,000 less in revenue and the rest is state funding. So if we ended up with level funding from the state, then that could, you know, we could be in a much better position revenue wise, but we just don't know at this point. Okay. All right. So I'll make a motion that we accept the 2023-2024 the 2023 proposed budget as as currently presented. I'll second. Any discussion on the budget in total or pieces or what would you guys like to do? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four nothing. Um, Five nothing. Adrian is not here. Oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah. Good catch. Um, okay. Okay, so the tax collector's report, that was actually in our package. It was a collection month this month, uh, $1.8 million in collections or somewhere in that ballpark, what I remember looking at. Uh, 1.816438.31. And we basically have, we have that much left to collect, I believe, a little bit more than that. $700,000 left over from other periods. All right. Um, any questions on the tax collector's report? Uh, any questions on any of the department reports? Uh, any uh, correspondence, Eric? Uh, there was no really significant correspondence, not that I know of. Okay. Is there ever any correspondence, Eric? Um, I get a lot of correspondence, but most of it goes straight into the circular file. Straight, straight, Don't waste your time straight, with it. No, you, uh, it I, I kind of have one further question before we end this section. Sure. And that is the, the one thing we haven't discussed directly with the budget. You've approved the budget, but what hasn't happened is you haven't authorized me as your representative to agree to the AHM budget. Um, and I've given all that information to you and you asked me the last time to give you some more time to review it. Are you at a position right now that you're willing to allow me to vote for the AHM budget at this point? Is it currently in our budget? It is currently in your budget. Then I make a motion that we authorize Eric to be our representative to vote for or approve the AHM budget. I'll second that. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have no correspondence. We have no public, so there will be no public speak. Um, so now we can uh, adjourn. Who's going to make that motion? Paul. Motion to adjourn. Oh, Jeff Murray stuck that one in. I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much.